Sports Fens record on Jin throughout summer, not amazing. Uh, four and two, he's already lost the game at Worlds. On the champion, four and three, Rocks Tigers, five seconds left. Need to lock in their jungler and their top laner. Last second switch, likely going to be Nocturne no, for the first it, time at Worlds. Oh, yes, it's going to yes, be Nocturne, yes. and I love Darkness. this. And it's actually so cool to take this against the Jin. You can completely shut down his vision during his ultimate, dive backline onto that Jin when he locks himself into that channel. That, in conjunction with Smeb on this cannon, has massive backline yeah. dive potential. And the backline is very squishy. It's a Jin. It's the Nami. It's the Karma. All these guys are going to be very susceptible to getting picked off. Cannon Nocturne going in at exactly the same time, even if you have shields, might be able to just completely obliterate Sven yep. Jin. I want to see a full damage Nocturne because this is actually the pick that can be demolishing towards Jin players in a lot of situations. It also works very, very well if G2 was saying, hey, we're a little bit low on damage, we'll go split push, which they may be trying to do with a champion like Gnar because Nocturne collapses on that better than almost anything else. And if G2 does lock in this Gnar, I do worry for them as they're kind of counterpicking themselves into the yep. cannon, which is a favorable matchup already for Smep. Then you have a very powerful jungler who can shut down the split push and I have to feel like G2 painted themselves into a corner with this draft. I think so. They telegraphed it very early, then they didn't necessarily even go with the mobile AD carry. So that sets Rocks up to pick two very strong divers. And it doesn't seem like Expect has a pick ready against the cannon, so he's just going to go with the generic Gnar. We'll get into this game very shortly. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. And as we get into this one, remember to jump on Twitter and connect with us using that hashtag, AskTheCasters, and we will bring you some of the responses live during the game. So keep them flowing. And myself, uh, I will be reading them out, and you guys will be answering them. Uh, <laughs> and that's just a super simple question. But make sure to bring those in as we get through this one. And we will try our best to answer them. But Peanut coming out here with this Nocturne pick. I mean, it's pretty much just like farming from the, from the uh, get-go. So where do you think he's going to start? Does it really matter? Is there a specific path that Nocturne's going to take? Uh, you either probably start top side, get your Gromp, blue buff. He's really mana-hungry because his spells are like really high base. But he's also, uh, he, he can get pretty low, so I'm kind of worried about how the Olaf can, like, punish him. <laughs> okay, what's going on here? <laughs> yeah. Just going bad? in here, a couple of undertows. Wow, okay. Peel's taking a lot of damage. That's another undertow going to land as well. He's going to have to flash and sidesteps the last undertow. May have even just been him going down. That was... I'm going to say quite unfortunate for uh, Peanut to start off the game. Yeah, that was a little bit weird given that we saw this for, well, against G2. You don't ever really want to face check brushes or anything if you're too late to arrive against an Olaf. Uh, it's generally better to just five man point and play defensive early on. Um, so that was a little bit weird. It's not going to impact him that much. He's going to have flashback up uh, by the time he hits six. So I think the worst part of it is he started W, so that slows down his clear. A bit, but he's going to get a leash, so hopefully it doesn't affect it too much. This also means Trick's going to be half mana pool. Does that hurt the Olaf at all early? He's starting, of course, bot side, so for blue, I guess it doesn't matter. Not, not, no, 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 not that much. It actually doesn't affect you much because you're, you're all about the regen, really. It just you wait for the next Q to be up, then you throw it again. Gotcha. Should be okay. So you're talking about Peanut. He was starting with the W here, Inori. Uh, in an ideal world, would you just start with the Q and max it? Yeah, you start... Well, he's still going to max Q. You just normally go Q, then W, then sometimes Q, or if you want to go for like a gank, maybe three, you go for the E. But you just generally farm. He's actually really good at clearing because he gets like a flat AD bonus from his Q, and also his passive is AoE effect, and it gives you sustain. His kit is really nice for jungle. Like, I personally play him a lot, and I enjoy him. He's a fun jungler. He's diverse in a way that no one has his ulti. He can deny vision and, and like his ulti is really good because like you think about the jump part but you don't consider like it denies them vision like they're literally concentrated only around themselves and ADs can auto like people outside of that vision so that's such a dramatic thing and I, I like that a lot and I think he can offer a lot for their team comp. It's very interesting champion to watch being able to deny vision etc. Uh, is there anything specific in terms of jungle clearing that you want to do? Remember last time I was talking to you and Nori, we were talking about Graves and how he was clearing the jungle and pathing. Is it just the goal is just to land Q on as much of the camp as possible? Yeah, you just want to make sure you're on top of your trail when you're queuing and just kind of kite it back a bit. Not much to do as Nocturne, but as long as you're clearing fast and sustaining well, hopefully I kind of want to see a different type of build. I wouldn't mind seeing Team Ad and just heavy power farming or 
he might just go for the early CDR rush, so that level 6 has the reduction, reduction on it. Yeah, and one of the things that's going on here is I feel like in the early stages of the game, Trick is going to be the one that's under pressure to make something happen. Um, because for the most part, Peanut's just going to be farming up until he gets 6, and if there's a very clear-cut counter gank potential uh, in some lane, then he's going to take it. I also think it's very interesting that Smeb is on Kennen and Kuro's on Malzahar, and uh, I, f I feel like the mid-jungle dynamic is actually the most crucial here. Uh, much less than the the top jungle, hmm. which is interesting, given that you know you would think that that would be the focal point. But I guess that they just trust Smeb to you know beat expect pretty handily, and then they want to focus resources into Kuro to just eliminate perks. How much? Uh how much can you actually get involved in that mid lane like pre-6? Because there's very low CC out of both of these junglers. Or you're just looking post-6 in terms of... Uh, you don't want to waste time. Every, yeah. every, every second is important as a Nocturne. Or in level 6, general jungler in general, like I consider it more similar to Rengar because like the 6 is the 6 power spike. It lets you get your jump ability to get on the enemy. So you don't want to waste any time possibly failing a gank. So you have to prioritize your time wisely and make sure you're consistently farming, but Trick, on the other hand, should be ganking and trying to get as much pressure as he can before Nocturne gets six. I'd really like if Trick, around level five point, invades one side of the jungle and gets wards out so they can make sure they know where this Nocturne six is gonna go, because for these junglers, the first ult is the most important. If they can snowball that, they can really punish the enemy team. If they get behind off it, then their like lead is like not as dramatic. What have you made of the jungle pathing and how like the early game's gone for these junglers LS? Like we've just seen that one gang from Trick. Well, I, I think that when you have a, a Malzahar uh, in mid lane and a Cannon up there in top lane, it's pretty expected that they can just play the lane very defensively. And because they're blue side, um, it's going to be even easier to play defensive and make it a lot more difficult, especially for an Olaf jungle uh, to pull off or coordinate any sort of ganks against you. So Peanut has just literally been going top to bottom, top to bottom, top to bottom over and over. And he has quite a level lead right now, and he's going to hit 6 pretty soon, and he's going to get a healthy recall right now. And I expect to see some explosions coming up in the next few moments. Well, just before that explosion happens, we have one quick question from Twitter from uh, WeezyM, who says, Do you guys think that the teams underestimate the Rift Herald at World so far? Uh, Rift Herald, I don't think it's very good. I think the, the Rift Herald is such a bad objective in my mind, because, like, if it's not a contestable objective, if you're contesting it, if you're doing it and they contest it, you're really behind because you took so much damage. It does a lot of damage with little reward. Right. It gives such... The gold it gives is so... Like, for the time you put in, it's not valuable. The buff it gives, it definitely is a good buff for that one person, but I don't like single buffs. I like AoE buffs where, like, I can get a dragon and every single person on my team benefits. When I get a Herald, I send, like, three people do this objective and it hurts me because I'm wasting time <laughs> yeah. not jungling, not getting farm, assisting my top laner who I feel like I can carry harder with, getting a buff that he cannot snowball that efficiently with. That's what makes, I, I just have a really bad impression about Harold stuff. So. Oh, first blood coming in, trick is, oh, <laughs> and the second kill as well. Got the level six, actually from the experience from the minions and that kill, so very well executed. LS was a like, what do you make of that gank? <laughs> I, I think that gank was very cookie cutter. They knew that they were lacking summoner spells, and Trick was able to just go down there and clean it up pretty handily. So, and we're going to even see a replay of it right now. So, they didn't really have intel that he was coming. Nocturne's out of position. Uh, so, you could argue that maybe Frey and Gorilla were playing a little too far up, given that they didn't have summoners. And this was just a really good gank by Trick, uh, because you, you saw that Peanut was trying to make something happen around mid or top lane. But. When Trick's in bottom, uh, you know, G2 is able to be like, okay, well, Nocturne's either going to show up, but if he shows up, we can just disengage because enemy bot lane doesn't have summoners. But if Nocturne doesn't show up, it tells you where Nocturne is. Well, they're going to try and make something up at the top lane, knowing that Olaf was down bot. Smep's going to take a bit of damage from the tower, but Peanut chasing after. And expect will actually from this one. This is game changing. This is not at all what they want. They needed a snowball. They lost bot lane off that. Not getting this is so good for GT. They can snowball this so hard. It's just such an unfortunate thing for Peanut because they were so close. If Nami wasn't there, they both flash forward. They knew they were going to get it, but they didn't expect the Nami, and that's so bad for them. 
What do you have to do here from Peanut? Because you have invested so many resources. Top lane burnt everything. You burnt everything. Uh, is it just farm and wait for next ultimate? Yeah, if you fail, try, try again. Like, we yeah. have to wait for that cooldown and go for it again. Because this isn't. You need to make sure you're getting some benefit from this ulti. Because Trick is a pre 6 jungler who didn't need his ulti and he already got two kills out of it. So you need to start making some plays or else you're going to fall behind. Yeah, I, I think that right now Nocturne's in a pretty awkward position. I actually saw Smeb moving down towards Dragon. I think that would have been actually a very interesting rotation because it would have been a uh, tempo fixer. Uh, because it would have enabled Smeb to re-get a defensive posture up in top lane and allow Rock's Tigers to capitalize on maybe taking a Dragon, uh, given that they can rotate everyone there and Trick would not be able to assist and Expect doesn't have Teleport. Um, so I, I think that there was a little bit of dropped opportunity right there. Uh, but definitely Rocks Tigers is pretty far behind right now. Yeah, I can see that. Trick is looking for this gank in the top lane. I don't think he was even seen out there as well. Expect going in. Smeb stunned down. Perfect combo comes out. Smeb pretty dead. Um, I think a pretty easy gank there as well. Trick didn't even use his ultimate. Um, in a situation like that, like, does Trick want to value like the ghost over the ultimate, or doesn't it matter in terms of picking like one or the other, Alice? Um, I think he just needs to make a judgment call uh, on if he needs the ghost or not, or if he thinks that Nocturne's there, but because he knows that Nocturne doesn't have ultimate, um, it's, it's not really so much of a concern. And yeah. you also know that Smeb doesn't have flash. Um, so no matter what, he's going to be able to catch him with the Undertoes anyway. Uh, and if anything unexpected does show up, uh, he has his ultimate available too. Now that Trick is in a pretty healthy snowball state, uh, does he just like carry on in terms of what he's doing, looking for those opportunities, uh, or is he just going to like tr try and power farm? Being fed as a jungler, does that change how you approach the game, Inori? I think he already chose his route. He went to Sci Stone. He's just going to be a ward machine and just influence his lanes with his high level advantage and not through his items. He's looking to give his vision, his team, his, the vision as his advantage, and that's fine. That's the route he chose. I just think it's kind of weird. I haven't seen a Stystone build in a while for junglers. Normally they just go for a green smite, but I guess he's going to try to use this blue smite as his advantage. And if he can snowball that, what do we have an ult? Flash. Ah, ah. Fiona's going to chase after as well. And there's yeah, Pux is both pretty dead. Yeah, there's that lights out I was talking about. That That is almost always guaranteed. If Karma steps too far forward and Kuro can just press R, it's 100% over. Doesn't matter. Trick shows up. Doesn't matter. It doesn't. No one can show up that can save that. Is that enough value here? So obviously that was the second try of try, try again. Uh, does he just need to keep going from lanes now or does he have like a different in in this game? I think they're salvaging their like game right now. They're, if they didn't work, they would have been screwed, but definitely it's easy to get, take advantage of the karma. And I think if they continue to pressure karma and perhaps get a few more kills mid, they can snowball that and try to help the side lanes because right now Kennen's not in a good spot. Ball lane. They can farm, but they're really like they're down CS a lot and they're in trouble. So your best bet is to snowball this mid and use that as your advantage to get side lanes helping. But hopefully, Smeb can hold his own oh. and not die to this. <laughs> that was that was pretty unfortunate. Didn't think the Olaf was there. Now he's just gonna charge at him and <laughs> he's he's dead. Um, in terms of position there for for a jungler, just hugging the wall. Um, is it like creative things you can do just to try and like dodge out a potential, uh, you know, like seeking skill shot as we saw there? Yeah, people send ch tend to throw it in the middle. So if you're really like on the wall, you can sign kind of dodge it because they're never going to just throw it on the side of the wall. They're always going to throw middle because that's the middle point. But right. I think he did a creative thing there. And I think he's pressuring the lanes really well. And I'm really impressed by how he's doing this. And if he continues this kind of way, I don't think the Rocks Tigers can be able to get out of this situation. LS, in your opinion, uh, is there a way that Rocks come back into this? And does it come from the jungle? Does it come from lanes? It will come on. It's going to come down to the team fighting. And G2 has a pretty big lead right now. Um, but a lot of that is inside of Olaf. And Olaf is sort of uh, like a. I don't even know how to describe. He's, he's like a firecracker or something. Where he he's goes Viking, off, and yeah. then if you if you can manage to sustain the explosion and no one goes down, then G2 is forced to back off and reset. Um, because Malzahar is able to actually contain the Nar, which is the other form of engage for G2. Uh, and I actually I don't know the, the interaction between Nocturne Ultimate and Jin Ultimate. Uh, 
I think it blinds you. There's no way. It doesn't make sense necessarily for him to see, but I have not seen that interaction I've in a while. Seen that interaction, yeah. I would assume it blinds you. Uh, I know what the interaction between Peanut running at Trick with people behind him. Uh, that's Trick dying. And G2 are just kind of running all over rocks at this at this point. Uh, I don't think there's anything that Peanut can do. He's just kind of running around circles trying to hit people. Ooh, is Craig in it? No, it doesn't look like it. I don't like G what G2 or what rocks try to do there. Like, they didn't really need to force hard. Like, they tried to kill the Olaf in their jungle, but they should have just, like, pushed them out and that was fine. They kind of like, <laughs> yeah, they did get the kill, but it's it's worse than it seems. And here you see they went for it. And I think Nocturne misses Q. Yeah, he sent it early. Normally you want to hold it for a little bit longer. And if he hit that, that definitely would have been a lot cleaner. Yep. And had they just backed off after this, I, I don't think there's any reason to actually teleport in Smeb. Um, obviously, Soraka could have just placed the silence a little bit differently and everyone could have gotten out and disengaged. Um, I guess there's an argument that maybe Soraka can be gunned down via Sven getting the slows on her continuously, and then Gamers 2 can, or G2 can just wrap around and get uh, the, uh, the execute off on her. Um, but I definitely think they overstayed their welcome there. Yeah, Trick also going very deep. He's actually in the exact same spot he uh, went to before when he was picked. When you're just this far ahead as Olaf, is it just fine to make these ballsy moves and be a little bit more aggressive than usually would be? Oh, definitely. Like, I think right now he's has that side stone, so you'll see this action repeated throughout the game where he's going in the jungle, going to get his side stone vision now. I think it'll, it'll, it'll be fine for him because he has that ult, he has escape, he has ghost, you're not going to really be able to catch him. He's, he's feeling really confident right now, especially after that early game. And that's going to be Dragon as well. So we've got a bit of downtime, so I'm going to shoot in another Twitter question at uh, Finra says, what do you think about Kha'Zix? Is he a viable competitive jungler? Do you think we're going to be seeing him this tournament, LS? Um, Kha'Zix, uh, before I came over to North America, I saw a ton of Kha'Zix, mostly from Chinese junglers. Um, and I was actually really expecting to see him uh, this world, but so far, no dice. Um, I do think that he does have potency, um, and I think that if a lot of jungle bans occur inside of a game, then there is a possibility that he can come out, yeah. I think for Kha'Zix is, he definitely is a strong jungler, like we see him, like if you see solo queue, he, he can just d demolish people, like he can 1v5, like I think he's so strong, but then I look at the competitive and I see the ways you play around Kha'Zix, like his isolation is very dependent on people being away from each other, but in competitive it's the exact opposite, everyone's together, they're clumped up, it becomes so much harder to make these picks that Kha'Zix so freely makes in solo queue, so I like. I hope to see Kazix. I love Kazix, but the more and more I think about it, the more I see his downfall and competitive. Like he takes advantage of mispositionings, but people are so good at positioning and competitive. I think you have to be really brave to really pull him out. I think you can pull him out, but you really need to be really smart and really know how to make it, his advantages work. And I think it's hard right now. Right, right. the counter play is really there mm -hmm. in uh, competitive. Yeah, I remember like Frog in the Green was complaining about all the one trick Kha'Zix in, uh, in NA solo queue, <laughs> but obviously harder to transition into competitive. Uh, G2 now just all over the map, significant advantage, vision all over Rox's jungle as well. Um, at what point and what's the criteria for going in and knowing that you have the ability to get the vision deeper? When do you want to get that in? Oh, uh, I think for you're pretty brave right now because uh, you're so far ahead. You can just go any time, but you just kind of get mid priority. Like the trick is to just shove the mid wave in, let it reveal and see where everyone is, and then push into their jungles. I think when you have the lead, it's a lot easier. You, you have a lot more like, room to push forward, and that's what they're doing a lot right now. I see them trying to do the mid siege with like the Jin and like the Nami. I don't think it's it's slow, but it's kind of working. But I guess they're really afraid of Silence control right now. And I guess the next step is mid tower. So like this is the slow game of how you get it. Like you pressure the wards. You go in with your poke mid. I think it'll take a long time, but they're kind of waiting for the next dragons to really make their move. And the next dragon is going to be a Mountain Drake, and G2 should be in a position uh, leading up to that to be able to capture it. And then with two Mountain Drakes, obviously, you're looking to get to Baron. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things for Rocks right now is they need to they, they don't need to really worry about getting deep wards or even river-based wards against G2. All they need to do is really play defensively and wait for G2 to sort of tilt into them or uh, try to force something that is unnecessary. 
Um, and if they can do that, and if G2 does just lose their patience, then it can get really bad. Talk to me about um, Nocturne's current uh, skill order, because he's gone 3 in Q, 3 in uh, E. Uh, I've also seen a lot of people just like put a lot of points into W as well for the attack speed. Is this common from Peanut? I think normally you're, you do 5Q, then remax E second. Mm -hmm. I think, yeah, that's what he's doing. Full, You do full, full Q max and E. W, it's kind of like a 1.1 or you want to keep it at 1 because it gives you that flat attack speed buff. Upping it more, it's like a spell shoot. It, it does its job with 1 point, but the most you get out of it is more attack speed, so you don't really necessarily need that. By going the E max second, he increases the fear duration, which is crucial on Nocturne. The second you get that fear off, that's when you need to start killing them. The longer the fear, the more time you have, they're not running away. So it's it's crucial to his kit. And the faster you get the E to 5 points, the better. And I, that's why the levels are so important on Nocturne too. And let's see, his item build, he's gonna have Maw too. Like, this is a good item build. You get some pen, you get some defensive stats with it. I prefer if you win more of a... He got his tier 2 boots already, but... Tier 1 boots is fine. He can play around that too. Yeah, you're totally right. That was five points from over here, half a meter away from the five, look like a three. Yeah. Um, uh, in terms of item build for uh, Peanut, you were just talking about like the Mord Man Mortius. Uh, when do you start going tank? Is it just like you want to go full damage to assassinate a single target, or is there a point in the game where you're like, all right, I need to start soaking damage? I think you really. It's like two or three items. Like, Maw is kind of like a hybrid item, it gives you that MR tank. Randuin's will probably be his armor item he'll get eventually, I'm not sure when. It's really like, I haven't seen much Nocturne, to be honest. I don't know how he wants to play it. Like, you could honestly just go Ghostblade next to get more pen. But judging this is competitive, I'll say he's going to go into tank after Maw. Mm -hmm. Probably get a Randuin's for some armor and maybe another MR item. Because you don't really have the luxury of farming. Like, he's going to be the one taking like the lower end of the CS, so he's going to have to go more of the tank route to be more useful. Yep, I completely agree with that. Uh, given how the game has played out and how compromised basically Rox is, um, he doesn't have the luxury to go into other items that maybe we could expect to see on Nocturne. Um, so definitely after the Maw is completed, uh, we might just see the Rondwins, although I guess there's actually an argument, uh, and this may sound strange, uh, for Ghostblade, uh, in that you, you notice that G2's team composition almost is not going to have any armor. Um, and so stacking that armor penetration over and over it does make it easier to eliminate someone, uh, primarily because they, they want to stack magic resistance against Kuro and Smeb. We have one more question from Twitter while well, we have a little bit of downtime. Uh, at Kwandance says, Why does Peanut keep using his Q right before going back? Is there any reason for it? Wait, does he mean like as he's backing recalling he uses Q? Don't know. Uh, we're gonna have some uh, action. Oh, oh no, he's he's bye just bye, dead. Karma. We'll visit that question in just a second before this, uh, or as this action dies down. So, um, I guess both. So, like, do you just want to expend your mana pool before going back, or maybe he means like after ultimate? Oh, if he means like ultimate, the trick is with knocking ulti is you can cast it while, wow. like when you ulti on top of someone, you can cast your Q mid air. Yeah. So a lot of times you want to kind of cast it right before you land on them because it takes away the animation, so you get it free and they don't really see it coming. Uh, so if that's necessarily what he's talking about, I, that's the best way to go about it. You want to wait for like the last second before you're on top of them to guarantee the Q proc on them so you can follow them with the trail. If he means before he backs, then I guess he kind of wanted to be standing on top of his trail just in case the jungler comes to fight. Yeah, LS nodding his head, so uh, we've, got the, <laughs> <laughs> we've got the agreement here <laughs> on the desk. That, yeah. um, Oh, as your ultimate coming across. Yeah, G2 looking to try and force this as well. And this is what Ellis was talking about, the two mountains. The next play is this Baron. They have the damage. They can do it fast. Cool. They also have true damage on the wall occasionally. Okay, Gorilla. <laughs> That's a lot of damage. Smash's going to jump in. That's a big ultimate, but no, he's, he's dead. Uh, G2 are very far ahead in this game. And Peanut, there's like nothing he can do here. Yeah, it's all these down too from the last gank. And that was, uh, that was a massacre. Yeah, you can say that again. <laughs> yeah, when Harambe went down in front of the Baron Pit just now, I mean, it, it turned out pretty bad. And they can't fight without Peanut. Yeah. Um, he, he's a pretty big component to their team. Now, although, hold that thought, that, uh, this is actually a little dangerous. Prey could salvage this fight. Oh, oh, oh my oh god! god. Steal from Peanut! And he gets the kill. Ah, oh, Peanut, the oh. hero. 
Can Prey just go Prey. in here? Everyone's oh. so low. Sven's backing away as well. Prey's getting so much of this and the flash from Mithy. Oh. Oh, He's still so going in. Okay, now the minion okay. wave's here and Prey's gonna back off a little, but the steal coming out from Peanut. So in that in that circumstance, you're massively down in terms of numbers. Like, t tell me how Peanut made that happen. Uh, they were getting really. It's an early <coughs> yeah. Baron. Like, they get low. It's not like they don't have the resources to tank it as much. They waited for their opportunity. They played the side really well, and he got it the opportunity to flash in, and he went for it. And he tried to combo. Trick could have smited, like, when you do the true damage smite, when you do the true damage E proc, mm. you need a combo to whiz your smite, because it literally has the base and they match together. Ah, that's just unfortunate for G2. They have the game really in their hands. I, I think that should have been the game. Yeah, it definitely would have been the you know? game. They're so ahead in gold, and this just makes it so much harder, because now you pray got a kill, and, like, Peanut got... Even like <laughs> they got a lot of gold. I he mean, has we, a BF sword now. <laughs> yeah. like, right. holy, like so it looks like uh, Peanut is actually going to do one of the Korean variations to Nocturne, where he goes Dusk Blade of Drakthar, mm. uh, and that is really scary because again, you you look at G2's uh, itemization right now. There is no armor anywhere. Yeah. He is going to hit like a train. Um, so when he just ulties onto someone, they're just dead. You can just say bye bye. Especially for a Jin who's just going to stand still and cast the ulti. If, I yep. if he sees the opportunity to get on top of him. There's not much a, G a Jin can do, and with that Dust Blade, it's gonna one shot him, and without an ADC in Nocturne, and Ezreal can go off, and it's just gonna be pretty hard for G2 to come out of this. Yeah, and we're now we're reaching the stage where Rock's Tiger's itemization, you see the Iceborne Gauntlet completed, Muramana, Rylai's Morello combo out for Malzahar now, and also Smeb has his Zanyas. This is the point where they get a lot of tricks available. Uh, to them during the team fights, and so that super all-in aggressive charge that G2 wants to do, there's lots of ways that they can basically twist and turn it until G2 runs out of gas. Wow, this game has uh, changed significantly over the last couple of minutes. Uh, Rocks are now able to push forwards and start sieging. Uh, is there a point where they just go too far forwards? Where should where should Peanut be? Because he's not a traditional tank jungler, so does he actually want to be behind the backline just in bushes? Uh, not really in a brush, you kind of want to be in the back to give as much support as you can. And yeah. When you see the opportunity, like, hold on, let's see what's going on. Yeah, well, Trick Trick's is going in. Pushing his life. Yeah, he gets a lot. But, Pray and uh, Smab. Pray and Smab. Kill the back line, so. And this, this is the thing I was talking about, they're out of gas. They're, they're yeah. completely out of fuel, and so now all the utility inside of Rox's comp it comes out the slows oh, on Malvin. Peanut. Slows on Ezreal. And that's it. It's an all-in. It, it, they have one opportunity to get it right. It's like a six-second window or something, and if they botch it, then it's over. The uh, rocks weathers the storm, and that's it. Man, Palms were sweaty. Like, Peanut, he hung towards, like, the backside of his team. Trick just, like, just dove in with Expect. Like, was this played correctly in terms of G2? They just, as you said, ran out of gas? I think this was really interesting. So they, they cast the ultimate from Nocturne to just basically cause chaos on the screens of all the players. Everyone's blacked out, so their vision is limited. And because of that, Prey is like, okay, I'm going to do this with Smeb. Are you guys okay? And they're probably saying to each other, yeah, okay, we got this. They're almost out of fuel, um, and we're going to be able to sustain. And then Rock's Tigers turns it. And this is what I was talking about, where they are so good at team fighting. It probably is their biggest strength. Yeah, I thought the team fight was beautiful by them. The back line goes in when they see the chance. The cannon, Ezreal, you don't really see that, like two, those two flanking together, but they pulled it off really well. I think G2 comp dived too hard. Like Their team fighting is very, yeah, Rox de definitely has a superiority in there, and you can it shows really well. I really like how they're playing these fights too. They kind of kite back, let the Olaf combo kind of push forward, and they kite it around with their comp, and it's really nicely done. And I definitely like the Nocturne ulti. Like, you see the value bullet. Like, he didn't use it to launch, he just used it for the vision denial. And hmm. It offers just so much. It's such an amazing ultimate. Yeah. And, I mean, I don't know what G2 is going to do. They do have. They're, they are going to be completely full on summoners soon, though. Whereas, uh, Rock's Tigers is not going to be as fortunate, especially missing that on Soraka. That's pretty big. Um, the problem is, though, is Baron is not coming up. There is a Mountain Drake which is available right now, but because of Ezreal and Malzahar, they can try to look to poke G2, and if G2 tries to funnel into this uh, corridor where they have the Jin Trap, 
stuff can get pretty bad for them. There's a ghost pop by Trick. He's going in. <laughs> Everyone's going in. Uh, good looks, Mep. He does land oh. the ultimate on a lot of people. Oh. Peanut went real deep there. He's dead. I don't really know what that was all about. I, that looks like miscommunication, but again, this actually came down to the summoners. Um, because of the summoner spells being up for G2, they're able to get away from some of the really hard engagements that Rock's Tiger's team comp offers, and now they're probably going to be able to pick up, uh, I can't say exactly the size of the minion wave. Okay, that actually is a pretty big minion wave. Um, so with the one Mountain Drake, they're probably going to be able to pick up this tier 2 bottom turret, fall back, get the Mountain Drake, maybe push mid, eat their jungle, recall, and reset. I'm just going to focus a little towards uh, the jungler here. Like, Peanut just went in and then insta-died. Like, was that what he had to do there to try and salvage the, sit uh, the situation, or was it just a suicide in order? It was definitely a suicide. You should have took the flash and left. He thought you could flash on top and get more, but he should have just read the situation better. Like, right now, like, you're diving into four enemy can't jam He flashed as well. Yeah, like, <laughs> yeah. You, you, there was no way out. He should have just took the flash. That's good enough and just gone back and like next fight you could kill him with your ulti while his flash is down. But he chose the suicide. And it looks like we are going back into game now and the issue has been resolved. But just taking one more step back, uh, looking at just how Rocks have played out this game and you were talking about them being a world contender, Inori. Uh, what do you make of just like what we've seen from them so far? Do you, are you still on that boat of they're going to be in the finals right here? I think this game was kind of disappointing, but I'm still assured they're one of the best. I think being able to win this game shows that they're one of the best. Like, mm. I just think it was unfortunate circumstances early on. They, it was kind of... Like the gang top lane. Uh, yeah, yeah, it was unfortunate. I think maybe their draft too. Like, It seems a little questionable looking at it. Like, I would look at G2's draft and I'd prefer this one over the Korean one. So I'm a little yeah. skeptical about what's going on exactly. I think... Their team fighting is still A grade, like, I like that a lot about them, and I just want to see them for maybe pick their draft better next game. Yeah. Now that we've seen the Nocturne pick in practice, because obviously you were uh, calling it out in Champion Select, like, what have you made of the Nocturne pick, and in retrospect, what would you have picked in Ori? Uh, <laughs> it's a good pick. I, I think it's a bit solo queue heavy, but he's done well with it. I, I, I think he, he got his team some leads, like, the kills were because of his ulti, so... Right. I think there is a lot of benefits to it. I still think he could have gone another jungler, perhaps. It might have impacted early game more, but I, they, I'm sure they practiced this a lot and they saw a lot of... They they see reason to this pick. Mm -hmm. Alice, do you agree? Would you have preferred something like a Lee Sin or a different pick? I, well, um, I, my issue is this is not a team comp that says <laughs> Rocks Tigers. Mm -hmm. um, so when, when you're looking at it, why is there not heavy aggression coming out of Peanut? Why is there not heavy aggression coming out of Smeb? Um, I can understand Kuro being on the Malzahar. Absolutely. Put him on a, a control uh, pseudo carry mid um, where he's able to just basically stay back, farm, etc. and let Peanut do his job. And if you have Prey in bottom lane, you know that's going to be a carry late game. Um, so it's very bizarre that they take these mid-range champions. It, it's just not something that you would expect out of Rock's Tigers. And we've been seeing this from a few Korean teams. We saw Samsung Galaxy do it against uh, TSM, and they got right. absolutely pulverized. Uh, we have a, a very relevant question uh, to this game. This comes in from at Rusty Law. Don't know who that is. Should Peanut be diving the Jin or peeling for his team? LS. Um, well, I, I think it depends on the situation and how the team fight is going to start. Uh, I think if Peanut's off on the side and it's uh, it's going to be like a runway fight, just a straight line shot, uh, I think that Peanut can just go straight on the back line to Jim. Um, but I think that if G2 gets the jump onto Rock's Tigers, then Peanut needs to make judgment calls on how he needs to use his ultimate and if he needs to peel for Ezreal or not. I think, it, yeah, it should be like a mixture of both. I think he should play both sides, kind of sit in the front line and play with your team. See if it's necessary for you to dive. Because you can the, the first person who's going to be diving will be the cannon. Like, that's his job, really. And you should just kind of wait at the front line, peel for your AD, your comp, and kind of wait for your opportunities. Because you don't really have to be anywhere because your ulti is such a far range. You just always have to just... You, you literally just need to be there and you can ulti and hit the back line anytime. So the opportunity you can wait. Trick. We can hold that thought, but Trick is almost... Ooh. Oh, Peanut. Oh. oh, but expect... 
Oh, oh my snap. god. Oh my god. What is going on? Where did G2 go? G2 just disappeared, slicing Maelstrom, the 5 for 0. I think that's just gonna be, like they're just gonna oh. rush down mid. Look at those bodies just lined up. <laughs> that is a depressing sight. That, that is what we can call a massacre. Yeah. Oh, uh, man. What were they doing? They shouldn't have clumped up. They should have figured out Cannon Ulti was still up. They didn't consider it. They clumped up and they got desperate for the kill. That's 5 for oh, like. <laughs> oh, oh, man. man. And you can see the face on Peanut as well. Ecstatic after that fight. They're just going to push in. Like, they're just going to get the inhib. Or maybe not. Just take the tower and back away. That was a, a big swing in this game. We're going to see a repeat of that. A lot of things happen, so take me through this one. So I thought that uh, G2 actually had it going well for them, but then Trick went too far forward. They caught up Peanut, but because Trick ran too far back, they weren't actually able to get the execute <laughs> onto him. And <laughs> oh, look snap. at Smeb. Oh, man. Oh, that's so weird. I think that, like, Smep, Smep was like the gremlin. Did you ever watch Gizmo as, or Gizmo as a kid? Or uh -huh. I don't know where you're going yeah. with this, but uh, carry on. They wanted to hug him, you know? But, ah, yeah. Yeah, he was, he was <laughs> fucking... Should dope. not have hugged that Demon, gremlin. Sorry, oh man. <laughs> Yeah, that did not go well. Um, so from well. So from Peanut's perspective, he dove on the Olaf. Was that just to try and burst him down as fast as possible since he was dropping low there? He sh definitely should have held on to the ulti. I think he, what he was doing at the start was fine. He was cutting back with his team. He had the fear on Olaf. Like, you just want to dish as much da <laughs> damage as you can on him and just wait for your opportunity. Like when Smev gets that ulti off, you just go in with that. So I think you just wait for your Q kind of to go in and just kite back as much as you can at the start. Oh, oh, and Trick having to use his ghost and all. Yeah. No, he does have Ionian boots, and I'm gonna also assume that he has the 15% uh, CDR. He'll be back up soon. Yeah. 25% summoner spell cooldown reduction. It's pretty nice. Why is Trick there in the first place? Does he want to be in a side lane as Jungle Olaf, who's gone tank? T I L T. <laughs> <laughs> it seems like it's a bit tilted, honestly. After that team yeah. fight, I'd be pretty uh. Upset, and I don't know what too much of his mindset right now. I still don't think he should have went to so such a defensive build with his early game advantages. Like, he went for like Sightstone and like straight into Locket. Like, I think Locket's fine, but like, he should have tried, tried to snowball more with his early game against the Nocturne, too. And I, I don't think he's like, he's playing too supportive and he should play more carry. Oh, oh, Trick, completely out of position. I think he hit the nail on the head there, <laughs> Inori. Um, if he's going to get tagged by the ultimate as well. And this is just all going down a creek without a paddle. Um, I think it's the best way to put it. Smeb stopped, being, uh, stopped in his aggression. But if you're the Olaf here, Inori, how much control do you feel like you have over the game right now? Because you've gone full tank. Yes, you did stuff in the early game. But your job is just to, like, yell to Masi and just run into the back line. You're just, you're gone at this point. Like, you you don't lose. You're literally, I'd rather not ulti because I lose my defensive stats if I ulti. Like... I feel like he, he didn't snowball that advantage enough. Like he, I don't like going supportive as a jungler, especially when I get early kills. Like this is a meta where you can carry as a jungler, even as a jungler as Olaf. Like, why do you put that lead into defensive items that your support can be getting? Like your support literally has the same item as you. Mm -hmm. Like why do you need two lockets on the same team? Like, I think he how he's playing jungle is incorrect. Like yep. you are the carry, you can carry. Your team needs you to carry peanuts to carry. He's doing what he should be doing, and he's taking this route that's not effective. Like, and it's just so disappointing to see because he did really well early game. He was three one. Like, he got kills. I'd rather him put more into damage items or more into selfish tank items so he could be more of the one person threat. And it's just sad to see because this is the result. And I also think mentality is such an important thing that he might be dropping the ball here in that too because mm. he's making very bad decisions and i think at this kind of level of game you really need that strong mentality that doesn't falter after one bad thing like you need to keep that strong mentality and focus on the game because it's never over till it's over so you should never quit when it's still going on yeah. very surprising to me as well just from knowing trick as a player he's always that guy who is saying we can win guys we can win guys and that's one of the reasons why he was the mvp two splits in a row but it just seems to be crumbling right here. Uh, but they are going to pull the trigger. But I think Rock may be able to get away. Kuro is maybe a, a little bit caught, but he's he's flashing out. Trick will pop the ultimate there just in case he got caught by the Soraka uh, Equinox. Yeah. I'm, I'm seeing now the Nocturne pick now. It's literally used as just an ulti as the Jin ultis. 
It's a waste so Jin cannot hit his bolt. Mm. I like the creativity a lot now I can see it. I'm really impressed by this because it really counters this Jin off because you cannot hit what you cannot see. It's just 50-50. <laughs> He's just shooting out blank. Yep. So I think it's really cool and it's something I didn't really see till now. I'm going to propose something on that. Yeah, I, yeah. I completely agree with you and I think that the logic is basically <laughs> perfect. But in a competitive environment, do you think that Sven actually just looks at one of his teammates' computers? and aims his mouse accordingly? I think the distance, it like, is. Well, how big is the gap between the, It's a pretty big gap. Is neck? It's a, <laughs> I think the gap's pretty big, so it's hard to say. And also, just because the length of it is so much farther away, okay. I think it's definitely an option. But then again, it requires your team to be in that position, too, to see. Right. So like a lot of these fights, it's the Jin is engaging. So if you can't, his ally is not really necessary in range. But that would also be a cool way to really take away from the <laughs> yep. That would be so sick. <laughs> yep. And I want to go back to something that actually Nori said a little bit earlier, where Trick, I think rather than that Solaris Locket, if he had Guardian Angel way sooner, he wouldn't have had to have literally danced in and out of team fights when he ran out of fuel, and he could have just kept charging on, um, because it would dissuade the enemy from wanting to just burst him down, because then he's going to have a res again. And I mean, given how much HP he has, it, it's a pretty big resurrection. To follow on from that point, because that's really interesting, if you were to rewind time with the context that Trick was getting fed early game, what would your guys be, like, your ideal item build be for Trick in this game? Honestly, if I was a 3-1 Olaf, I wouldn't mind some damage. I'd go maybe Black Cleaver if I really want a hard snowball. But you don't really need damage as Olaf. Mm. Sorry, one second. Sure. LS, <laughs> you want to follow on that point? Um, I, I think what, you know, he's saying you don't really need damage on Olaf is primarily because Olaf does uh, true damage. Yeah. Um, with his uh, thundering blow, um, so I, I think Anori is ready. Okay, I'm gonna so pick I, it up again. Uh, right, yeah, yeah, so you you don't really need damage because like yeah, you have the E true damage and you need the pan, so you can you have your R A D flat, so you have that. You kind of go more selfish defensive items like G A earlier would have definitely been a strong point for him. I think he should have definitely rushed something like that, like. Even like maybe you don't really need round ones. Like I think you just skip out on the sight stone. You go more like to the green smite, and then you get the early, perhaps the GA or the dead man's earlier, like something like that. But not going for this lock. It's sight stone build. Well, are we back to like the old season? Like this is like <laughs> not how you're supposed to play it right now. I think he's really approaching the game incorrectly. Like I don't like seeing this because I don't want it to be the standard for junglers where they're <laughs> made yeah. to be so second supports. I think. They're starting to rise up and kind of make these junglers more carry, and it's kind of sad for him to be going back to these old routes. Oh, so pretty of an ultimate. And, uh, you know, that question that was asked earlier about the Nocturne and how you use the ultimate, we're, we're really getting to see both yeah. ends of it, and I, I think it's actually really educational, uh, you know, for anyone curious about Nocturne that it is not always used one way. There's multiple ways to use that ultimate, and I think that Peanut is displaying a very high level of it. So what was exactly uh, what he was aiming for there? Because he cast the ultimate, obviously he didn't uh, jump on someone, but he was denying vision. What was that specifically for here? Um, well, the, the, the G2 member was by himself, mm -hmm. so when the entire thing goes dark, he doesn't know where he's walking into, he doesn't know what's happening. Um, and so now it's on his teammates, who may be panicked, under pressure, whatever, to sort of convey to him what is happening. And that's just not a situation that you want to be in. Very exciting to see the uses of ultimate because one of the big things with Nocturne that everyone knew was like, oh, you can deny teleport, but like even in these niche circumstances, Peanut's able to make things happen. Um, G2 very far down now. They're being pushed into their base. Uh, they like all they have going for them is they have those two dragons, uh, and now they're just trying to defend against all this. Uh, if you are trick in this circumstance, he's continuing to go for uh, tank items, and now he has the GA as well. Is there still value at this point, just saying, screw it, I'm going to pick uh, a Black Cleaver and have a bit more threat? Or do you just want to, you know, stick to your guns? No, your time is definitely done for damage. The damage is something you get really early if you're really trying to snowball that game super aggressively. Got it. I think at this point, you really need to find the most cost-efficient items you can possibly grab, because what is his income right now? It's zero. He shouldn't be farming any of these ways for some reason he is. <laughs> but normally, you're getting zero income at this point. Like, all junglers devote, like, their build switches to defensive and more like cost efficiency because you're getting less income on the map. And here he's gonna try to fight. Yep, and they're gonna try to go for a fight, and now it has reached the point where uh, expect can probably expect what's about to happen to him. There's yep. no tricks here, and Rocks have a lot of perks. 
going in. Yeah, I'm not gonna. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not gonna follow kidding. you down the rabbit hole on that one. But everyone just dead on G2. Expect tried to go in, tricked at the U-turn. Like this is this is all gone wrong. And Rocks are gonna finish this one off. Finally, 43 minutes into the game, there was a pause midway through as well, but. Rocks eventually managed to come out here, and you were talking about before, Anori, like if they do manage to pick up this game, then it does show that they are that world-class team, and they eventually brought it home.